Hello people and welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me in this beautiful day. Today I want to walk you through a color study that I'm gonna do for one of my sketches in the sketchbook. It's from a place where I just began working in and also I, uh, I'm going there pretty often to get inspiration, to uh, just enjoy nature. It's a lake nearby and I will just show you the sketch. It's from a lake, it's called Lake Ahula. And this will be a painting featuring a gray heron, which are very common birds here in Israel, around the lakes. So I wanted to paint it. I got some pretty good footage of it. And overall I just want to walk you through how I'm doing a color study for a bigger painting, how I'm making sure things work out in the color harmony phase. And yeah, because I made many mistakes in the past and even recently with the color study, and if I'm skipping it or if I'm um, not making sure everything works I just get stuck so much um, during the final painting and uh, it's really annoying for me so my intention for this color study is to be super super patient and just make sure everything works I think I will do it in two layers. Uh, so yeah, let's jump uh, right into it. So let me walk you briefly on the subject matter of the video as I'm preparing the surface uh, just a quick note I'm putting gesso on a watercolor paper 300 grams and then I send it with the paper sand and then sand paper not paper sand and then I put another layer of gesso again using sand paper and then it's good to go um, at least for me, it's uh, good enough. So, what's the purpose of this video anyway? I was wondering a lot why making big mistakes when you can make small mistakes and for me it's always been let me make big mistakes <laughs> and uh, yeah I needed to learn it the hard way um, so have you ever began a painting and you know you begin it everything goes well and then suddenly you get stuck you don't know how to solve a problem or something isn't working out and when you get to the I don't know difficult part or more complex part of the piece and I found out is that by doing as much preparation as you can before you begin the actual painting the actual final piece the more easier and easy going it will be for you to yeah finish the piece successfully with your expectations fulfilled so in this video I present to you the color study phase in which I make sure everything works out color wise harmony wise Maybe I want to try new things and maybe I want to try new colors.
Now let me speak a little bit about a, a project that I did last year as I'm doing this underpainting. Now for this underpainting I'm really trying to emphasize color temperature differences. So I'm trying to create the difference between warm tones and cool tones from the early beginning from the underpainting to get a better idea what's the relationship is gonna be when I put the color and for the translucent parts of the color that I put next and um, some of the underpainting will shine through and will make it I will use it for adding more detail maybe or adding more or creating like kind of a different tone to the colors that I'm using A year ago, I began a project um, which for me hasn't really succeeded, let's say. It succeeded in some ways because I faced my fears and uh, doubts, but it didn't succeed like in the final result. And through the stages before I began painting, you know, I prepared, I did some drawings, I, I sculpted my reference, there is some flying koi fish in the sky and a huge Columbus cloud in the middle of it and I try to do as many preparation as I could drawing and doing color study and doing smaller scale work and still because I haven't done it really correctly I, I just got stuck and it took me instead of like maybe one and a half months to two months to finish the, the painting, it took me four and a half months. And I go, it got to the point that I repaint the sky and the major cloud like six or seven times because I wasn't sure where, where I'm heading or what, what I'm actually doing. I wasn't familiar so much with my palette. I wasn't familiar so much with the color harmony that I wanted to um, convey in the piece. And it really, really led me to realize something, that I'm really impatient. I wanted for this painting to be kind of warm and yeah, to expect, express more of the warm tones so I decided um, usually I use ultramarine blue and this time I decided I will use Payne's grey instead and just see how it works this is the purpose of color studies you just uh, experiment and try new things so I picked some warm tones, warm colors, um, burnt sienna, venetian red, quanacador magenta, D3, and also two yellows that are kind of warm, Naples yellow and Indian yellow, um, and yeah, we'll see just how it goes. Now as I lay down the colors um, that I'm gonna use for this um, color study um, I will talk about another thing that I found that is really useful and that is intention. While practicing I consider the color study phase and the drawing phase and everything prior to the final painting I consider it as practice. The final painting is practice as well of course but there's let's say less stress to make the color study or the drawing or the thumbnail sketching or the sketching in general 
there is less stress to make it work, to make a good outcome of it. So it's less stressful for me and I consider it as pure practice. And if something doesn't work out, I can always do another one. I could always try new ideas, new things. But for me, doing this kind of studies, doing the drawings, I can I, I like to bring something into the table, which is intention. That is prior to beginning the practice or the, let's say the, let's, let's say the color study, this color study, I try to put intention to what qualities uh, do I wish to develop while doing this, uh, this color study. And for me it was to emphasize warm tones against cool tones. For me it was to emphasize bold brush strokes um, rather than trying to get to the minute detail uh, in the... you know, to try to express things as boldly as I can to get the bigger idea laid down without trying to rely on detail, without trying to rely on... Um, yeah, just end work, let's say. Because I, it's also a color study, I want to make it rather quick or rather expressive because there's no problem, I will put, you know, the extra effort in details and the extra effort in all the minute stuff uh, in the final piece anyway. But here it's to lay down the, the core idea that I had, that I experienced when I was in the field, experiencing this beautiful evening. And for me it's crucial and I can only recommend for other people to try to put intention in your practice. When you begin a new piece, maybe you're doing studies to it, try to work on your weaknesses. Maybe you rely too much on detail, on the detail brush and it could be helpful for you to try bolder brush strokes or maybe you always rely on the same colors so you can try in the in your next color study to try more different color combinations the inf different scenario than the one you usually paint it's really good opportunity to get out of your comfort zone realize it's practice the outcome doesn't matter the slightest when it's about practice for me of course i try and i work hard and I put the time and effort but I'm not always stressing today I used to rush this phase a lot um, when I only began implementing it and later on as I was more eager to begin new projects as I said, as, as I said before but nowadays it seems like this is the most crucial part, so I take my time so much. I, I grew a lot of patience through doing these color studies. So, please, let me hear your thoughts. What are your processes for painting a piece, an original one? How you go about and do things? I really like to study from other artists and get inspired by them continuously. And please share. Share if you agree and share if you don't agree what, what your thoughts are. I hope you enjoyed this video and now I'm working on the final painting and it will be out maybe next week or in two weeks from now. Um, thank you for attention and for stopping by and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye for now.